Oh God! And then and then that's and then that's the section. This where is I open have Sicilian. Completely forgotten. Oh no! How the Sicilian works. So uh, one this rule is in like Sicilian. the extent of what I know. Ah. Uh, so I'll give you a few rules. So you should flip the board so you're looking from Black's perspective. Yeah. If White ever plays d4, you instant take it. Okay. One of the points of the Sicilian, you want to trade your less centralized C pawn for white center D pawn. So if white offers this trade, you just take it. And then you have two center pawns against white's one center pawn. Right. Of course, white has a bit more activity, um, but it's, uh, it's okay. Well, you'll, you'll deal with it. I'll show you maybe a more trappy opening that can be effective, at, uh, especially against the, the field, if anyone goes into this. I'll recommend sure. starting with knight f6. Back in the pawn. Okay. A lot of newer players are just inclined to trade where they'll take the knight. And now, the question knight. for you, what do you take back with? I take with the b pawn. Good. Most times you should take towards the center. This time especially take towards the center. You don't want to take and then allow the queen trade. Yeah. Now, this will be a test for you. Pawn e5. Uh, it looks scary, just, but... You can just win the pawn with um, queen to a5. Queen right? a5. Okay, you've, you've been doing your puzzles. Good. <laughs> yeah! Queen a5 is such a common tactic, especially in Sicilian. Right, okay. So if white ever takes and plays plays e5, you're, you're happy. It's better for white to play knight c3. And then the trickiest move I can recommend here is pawn e6. I'm actually curious if maybe you would play this anyway because you want to develop your bishop. The point is you want to exert as much pressure as possible against e4 pawn. You're already attacking it once. You want to pin the knight, remove the defender, and win e4. Mm. A lot of the players will kind of play kind of carefree here, like develop their bishop and go for castling. If white plays bishop e3, you develop your bishop and you pin the knight, you make a threat. Yeah. White's already under some kind of uncomfortable situation. White will have to defend the pawn. If they play a3, you take, you win the pawn, you're happy. Yeah. White will either play f3 or bishop d3 here. Against either move, you're going to play d5, which is a really strong continuation. Let's say bishop d3. You play d5, and your pieces are working like really, really nicely. Your knights control all the center squares. You're maximizing pressure against e4. You're pinning this knight. You're threatening to win the pawn. If white takes, you take back with a knight, hitting this and this, and you're happy. Bishop d2, trying to defend everything, you win the knight on d4. Right, yeah. So if white really tries to hold on, maybe they would play a move like f3, holding on for dear life. Mm -hmm. And then there's a, a fun move on e5, just expanding, where now you're getting kind of the ideal center and you're making a threat in the process, you're attacking the knight. Um, if the knight retreats, you just keep pushing and now you're winning material. Yeah! So... Yeah, it's uh, it's exciting if you can win like, just get a winning position really early as uh, as black. If white takes, you're not winning material, but you're getting a really nice center. Still pressure, still threatening a fork. Knight's mm -hmm. still pinned. So this is a uh, position a lot of players will stumble into, and the moves are very natural for black with pawn e six, bishop e four, maximizing pressure and going for uh, just uh simple control of the, the center. I don't want to overwhelm you with like too many different opening variations, but I think this is a good starting point. And if you do run into like maybe some weird move you haven't seen before, you just kind of ask yourself the questions like what does the opponent want to do before you make a move, make sure you're you're not like giving away anything for free. And as long as you got out of the opening okay, um then you, I think the, the middle game and end game, as we noted, is your, your strongest point. Yeah. 